everyone, this is Jackie Pupo from Community Refuge and Immigration Services. I work as a refugee organizer uh, here in Columbus, Ohio. I'm excited to talk about the elections going on right now. And um, so I'll go ahead and share my screen. It walks you through the different information we want to share uh, during this presentation. And um, the topics that I intend to cover uh, include U.S. citizenship and its benefits, why it's important to vote. Uh, with this, we shall talk about the history of voting in this country and voting and our values. How and when and where to register to vote here in Ohio. And then how are we going to ensure during this pandemic we are able to vote safely? And then the important dates for the upcoming elections and uh, a broad understanding of who and what we vote for. So um, as we move forward, I want you to know that this presentation is only meant to educate you and also to prepare you for the voting process. It, is, it shouldn't be regarded in any way as a legal advice or any advice to vote for a particular candidate. So uh, the history of voting in the United States. I want you to know that the, the right to vote we're enjoying today wasn't won freely. Since 1788, when voting started in this country, people had to fight, people had to shed their blood to be granted the right to vote. We see that 50 years later, you had to own property or, and also be a white man to be able to vote. And decades later, we see uh, black people and women protesting to be granted the right to vote. At that point, there, there was an introduction of a literacy test and also uh, the paying of poll tax, which was done to discourage people from voting. But later on in 1975, uh, we see that young men and women were allowed to vote at the age of 18 but previously you had to be 21 and male to be able to vote so what are some of the benefits of becoming a u.s citizen it's not about just getting naturalized there are a couple of uh benefits that come along with uh getting naturalized and one of them will get a u.s passport this will ease your in and out movements and also you can start on the immigration process of bringing your family members overseas to the United States. Um, or scholarships and grants become easier at that point to get and you can also run for some public offices besides um, uh, it's only the, present, the presidential position that you can run for because that is only retained for people who are born in the U.S. Uh, soils, but the rest of the public offices, when you get naturalized, you're able to run for them. Uh, you're also able to get some government benefits and then uh, some uh, government, uh, some federal jobs require you to also be a U.S. citizen uh, in order for you to get hired. And the last one and most exciting is when you, uh, you get naturalized, you get the right to vote. Uh, moving forward, uh, what are some of the importance of voting? So uh, voting impacts every one benefit of citizenship. The ones that I mentioned in the previous slides get affected um, uh, when you don't vote and, and our lives. Then voting is your civic duty. Voting is a cornerstone of democracy and the most exciting part of it, voting is private and safe in this country. Uh, most immigrants come from a background where voting was, um, was violated, democracies were uh, violated, but here just know that your vote counts and please don't fear to get to the polls because it's going to be private. Uh, voting in the US allows you to disagree with the government or disagree with those who don't stand for what you believe in. And voting allows you uh, to elect policymakers who care about the issues you care for too. And then uh, we are also going to talk about the power of new Americans. If you all know, new Americans is a word that was introduced for immigrants. So if you're an immigrant, just know you're a new American. So since 2000, the size of immigrants electorate nearly doubles to 23.2 million. And, in, in, and since 2014, over 5.3 million people have become naturalized citizens in the US. And coming here in Ohio, 293,426 immigrants, which is a 50% has naturalized since 2018. 
and 84,885 immigrants uh, were eligible to become naturalized U.S. citizens by 2017. And more than 23 million U.S. US immigrants will be eligible to vote this coming fall uh, uh, for the presidential election. That is really exciting. And what are some of the requirements you need to register to vote? Number one, as I mentioned, you have to be a US citizen. If you're still a legal permanent resident, please don't dare get to the polling, uh, polling stations. Uh, it's only a uh, result for the US citizens and you should be 18 years and older of age but for those who will be 18 by november a third please don't hesitate to register you can go ahead and register as long as you know by november 3rd 2020 you will be 18 years old and you should also be a resident of ohio um, and the person who is regarded to be a resident of ohio you must have lived in ohio for 30 days prior to the elections. Um, and then your background should definitely be clean. You have to make sure you're not incarcerated, you're not in prison, and you have not been declared incompetent for the voting purposes. And also you must have been, you, you, you must have not been permanently disenfranchised from violating the election laws. So how and where you can register to vote here in Ohio? The, um, the one part that I've just been introduced is the online. Please get on www.voteohio.gov website and check out the information. You register or up, uh, update your uh, voter uh, registration information. And then at BMV, you can register to vote. If you go to renew your driver's license or state ID, please um, ensure that you ask for uh, for the for the forms to register to vote and also you can register by mail and in person at the board of elections for those living in franklin county please uh, get on most road on address 1700 uh, where you can update or register to vote and also during the naturalization ceremony um, most of us get uh, uh, register to vote during the naturalization ceremony. What do you need to register to vote? Number one, you must have Ohio, a valid Ohio driver's license number and also four digits of your social security number. If uh, Then you should also have a copy of the following current and valid photo ID, a valid military ID, current utility bill within one year of election day mark that within one year of election day, then bank statement, paycheck, <clears throat> paycheck showing your name and current address, and then government check. Then updating your voter registration. Like I mentioned earlier, you can do it online. Please get on the website, um, the Ohio Secretary of State website, which is www voteohio.gov and update your information. Mark this date. Uh, for those who will be voting in the November general election, the deadline to update your information is October 5th. Again, again, it's October 5th. Please mark that date. So starting from today, please go ahead and update your information. So ways we can cast our votes. Number one, it's early in-person absentee voting. Please, um, this is uh, easier, it's convenient, and early voting uh, reduces the chances um, uh, chances of lines at the polls on election day. Just know on November 3rd, there will be so many people lining up to vote, so it's better for you to do it early. Um, and then one of the, in, uh, the, the beautiful part of that is the absentee ballots uh, the first vote, the first votes counted on election night. Then we also have absentee mailing, uh, voting um, absentee mailing. You can mail your ballot. So the deadline for requesting a ballot, uh, the absentee ballot, is three days before the elections you plan you plan to participate in. And for, for this case, uh, October thirty first is the deadline for requesting for absentee ballot. And then we also have in-person voting and online. So if you have any question, contact the Secretary of State of 
the secretary, the Ohio uh, Secretary of State of Election Division by mail or by phone. So uh, phone number is 614-466-25850 or 877-767-6446. For those in Franklin County, please don't hesitate to reach out uh, the County Board of Election on Moss Road, 1700, and then you, um, the, the postal address is 182111. Uh, you can write to them or call them on their number, 614-525-3100. For those who intend to request for absentee ballots, or um, please reach out to the absentee department telephone number, which is 614-525-3100. 3770. Reach out to them and ask them whatever you feel you need to ask them. Then early in-person absentee voting, um, uh, you will go to your county board of election. I uh, For those living in Franklin County, uh, it's on most world, like I mentioned earlier. So, but those ones are outside Franklin County. You also have specific areas you vote from. It could be the county board of election or designated voting centers. Um, so in person, um, mark this date, in person absentee voting starts Tuesday, October 6th to, um, to Monday, November 3rd. Uh, again, I say Tuesday, October 6th is when it will start and to end on November 2nd, which is a day um, prior to the on November 3rd uh, general elections. So here are some of the, uh, the crucial dates you have to put in mind if you're intending to go for the in-person early voting. And it's October 6th to uh, 16th, it's, uh, it's weekdays, Monday through Friday. It's going to start from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then 19 to 23rd, it's still Monday through Friday. It will start at 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., adding an hour from the previous time. And then Saturday, October 24th, it will be 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Please mark this day so that you go to the county board of the election knowing that you're in the, in the designated time. And then Sunday, October 25th, it will be 10, uh, it will be 1 a.m. I'm sorry, it will be 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. It will be 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. And October 26th to 30th, it will be still weekdays, Monday through Friday, uh, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. We are given ample time to go and cast our vote. And then Saturday, October 31st, uh, 31st it will be, which is going, um, yeah, October 31st is going to be 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then Sunday, uh, November 1st, it will be 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Monday, November uh, 2nd, it will be 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Please, please mark those days so that you don't get frustrated getting there uh, um, on, a, on different times and different dates. So um, the three options on how to request for your absentee ballots are yeah, option number one, you can print your request um, and mail it to your county board of elections. Please, all this information is displayed on the Ohio Secretary of State website. I will not go ahead and click on all these options, but just know, all this is found on the Ohio Secretary of State uh, website, which is www.voteohio.gov. Again, it's www.voteohio.gov. Please get there uh, and check out for that and uh, put in, in, input in the information that you asked. And then uh, we see that option number two, uh, have an application mailed to you. I'll quickly... Um, uh, and then option number three, make your own application and mail it to your county board of election. Please um, request for the absent, absentee ballot might, must be received. Your request for the absentee ballot might be, must be received by Saturday, October 31st, no later than, 2 p, uh, no later than 12 p.m. Please mark that those are the three days before the election day. I mentioned that in the previous slides. So please, and also, uh, completed absentee ballot return must be received in person by Tuesday, must be received in person by Tuesday, November 3rd at 7.30 p.m. Or if mailed, must be postmarked by November 2nd um, 
2010 and received by Friday, November 13. Please mark those uh, crucial dates. So in person voting on the election day, um, so general elections are going to be on November 3rd and um, the, um, everyone who is naturalized to vote, please ensure you cast your vote. Uh, you cast your vote uh, to be able to influence the policies, um, to vote the people you want in office. So um, election day hours start at 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Remember to carry your ID. We emphasize that again, remember to carry your ID so that you don't, you're, you don't I know they will not turn you away, but remember to so avoid those inconveniences, remember to carry your ID. So what is your responsibility during this time? We want to make sure that you mobilize your community to go out and vote. Make sure that you check your phone, uh, phone book uh, contacts. And uh, uh, if you have people who are naturalized, please encourage them to go out and vote with you. Uh, make it fun. Let them go out and vote with you. Then a voter with physical and mental disability, please don't uh, don't hesitate to carry somebody or to come along with somebody who will help you uh, walk through the, your voting process. You have a right to, to go along with somebody. This also includes people who have a language barrier or who, have, um, uh, uh, who are not comfortable reading. So please, please come along with somebody who can help you. We don't want to miss out that vote. Um, <clears throat> phone banking, make it fun, call out all your friends you know who are already naturalized and let them know that you should all go out and vote. You should be the, the ambassador out there to remind people to go out and vote. Text people, text them and let them know. Uh, for those who are comfortable and uh, uh, are savvy with technology, please help people look up their polling stations and uh, <clears throat> Social, social media, make sure you use your Facebook uh, pages, Instagram, YouTube channels to encourage people to go out and vote. Uh, post a picture of you after voting and uh, let people know how easy it was so that they also pick on the, the excitement, the vibes of, of going out and vote to the early voting. Um, so uh, please uh, call upon your community, call upon your communities. Uh, to go out and vote. Uh, the other one thing we want us, we want you to do is to share your story. Please share your story as a first time voter on your Facebook account and let people know why you're voting. So here we have Fabiola Ladros. She is trying a, um, to share her excitement um, be, being able to vote for the first time this coming fall for the presidential elections. And the reason is she mentioned why she became naturalized was because she wanted to be here with her kids. Uh, she had fears of deportation. And um, so uh, she's really excited. Those are some of the stories we want to see on your Facebook accounts, uh, sharing how you experienced and how it felt like voting for the first time. So for more information uh, regarding voting in Ohio, please check out these important website. We have vote, uh, vote414.org Ohio. We also have uh, Ohio's uh, Secretary of State website. Uh, so please check them out. And in case you have any questions and you want to reach out to me, uh, don't hesitate to call me on my number 614-309-2015. Once again, I'm Jack Kifuko, Refugee Organizer with Community Refuge and Immigration Services. It was great spending this time with you. Uh, thank you so much. I'm really uh, waiting on you to go out and cast a vote on November 3rd. For those who are going for early voting, please uh, do it. Mark the dates that I mentioned during the presentation. And I'm looking forward for you to do what you're meant to do, your civic duty. Thank you so much. And please take care. Bye.